and I do not own copyrights to the music and to this fair use. I've seen the darker side of humanity, suicides, murders, spousal abuse, human trafficking. That shit stays with you for a long time. The one weekend, a large group of around 60-ish people, they wanted to purchase out the entire hotel so they could just turn it into a giant orgy. Uh, the cost of that property was upwards of $250,000 for two nights at a time. That says you've got money to spend. They left a nightmare room. Blood, feces, semen stains. One of my bell boys came up and was like, I've got a black light, I'm curious. He turned it on and I remember we like, we looked down and saw the stains, we looked at the sides and saw them on the wall. At one point in the bathroom, we looked up and saw them all on the ceiling and we were just like, how? How do you do this? This is not human. Were you on the ceiling? I worked as an operations manager for around 10 plus years. I've worked in hotels where the average daily rate is anywhere from like $99 and then all the way up to boutique properties where the average cost is around $1,400 per night. In general, the higher up that price value, the more common it is to be treated like you're less than you. The people who are coming to visit you, famous pop stars and Russian oligarchs, they have a private plane that they get in a private vehicle with all tinted blocked out windows. Sometimes they have security squads, they'll, they'll snap their fingers at them. Very large sense of entitlement where if they approach the desk, they're the only thing that exists to you in that moment. And that's what they came to expect from that level of entering a luxury hotel. Most people who visit boutique hotels are not coming for business. They're there for pleasure. There was a group of fabulously wealthy individuals. You can definitely get a sense of how much wealth they actually have when they're talking about things like buying a fleet of Boeings in the lobby casually. They buy out this entire property. They were spending as much as a luxury wedding. And uh, it's basically a giant swingers orgy. We'd have people having sex in the pool, people laying on our wine bars naked, a couple having sex on the balcony in plain view. So you're looking up at it, quite an angle. And every single room would have a different theme and a safe word posted outside of the door. The one that stands out to me was there's a mermaid themed room. It was actually kind of impressive, the details they went, so it was very like under the sea vibe. There was the Wild West room. There was the straight up BDSM room. One couple we had to talk to, while they were naked. They would purposely wait to start having sex until housekeeping wanted to clean the room. They wanted somebody to watch. The day after they had all departed, I got a call from housekeeping saying that one of the showers was busted and I gotta take a look at it. And they had half sawed off the actual shower piece, the shower head, and attached a four foot long anal probe hose to it with multiple settings on the other end. And uh, that was as disgusting as you can imagine. Uh, after all of the uh, the drama and mental scarring that we put up with for this, this orgy buyout group. Probably between about 30 staff, I want to say we made 20 bucks in tips. I found myself on more than one occasion getting stuck in awkward situations between husbands, their lovers, and then the actual wife. The worst case scenario was husband and wife shared credit cards naturally, and she started seeing the hotel show up on the books, and she stormed in and like slammed bank statements down, was like, I know my husband's here, you guys are lying to me, we have to just say, you know what, I'm so sorry, we don't have anyone here by, the, by his name, and uh, meanwhile, we can literally hear them having sex upstairs. Apparently she didn't notice the sounds were uh, familiar to her, which might be a sad statement on their marriage, actually. The problem with working with the fabulously wealthy is that they often assume that the staff is there for a and call regardless of what the request is. It was really common for the high rollers to approach attractive staff members and essentially just ask them, hey, if I pay you X amount of dollars, will you meet me in my room late at night and fuck my brains out? That's a quote from someone, sadly. We had a very busty, gorgeous front desk woman at uh, one hotel, and someone came down and, and offered her quite a bit of money in front of management. And at the moment, she naturally declined. I uh, have security cameras in all the halls, and seeing that person sneak out around 2 a.m. was definitely a little suspicious. 
the most shocking example was an incident where the wedding was around 2 p.m. ish that day. Come nightfall, one of our event staff slept with the wife and ended up getting caught. It turned into quite a big deal with screaming and shouting and all this stuff. He hid in a bathroom in a supply closet until the heat died down, and then he just walked into the front office and clocked out like nothing ever happened. His, uh, his mom happened to be in charge of events, so she made sure he didn't get terminated. The demographics of the staffs who work at hotels are usually pretty evenly split. If you're an attractive white person who speaks English quite well, you're probably going to be reservations, front desk, something visual. If you're not of that ethnicity, just because they have an accent that might not present well, to your guests. Your most likely bet is that you're gonna get placed for housekeeping. If you're working at a decent property, you could probably get 10 to $15 an hour as a front desk host. If you're housekeeping, you're maybe getting nine to 10. It, it was wildly unfair. We were actually advised to handle our housekeeping teams under the concept of divide and conquer, telling them, you know, oh, well, so-and-so's team is much better than yours. You should really try to keep up with the Mexican team. It creates that toxic environment. This prevented the entire housekeeping team from uniting together and presenting concern. And I saw that kind of model in multiple hotels. In retrospect, I can safely say that the hours they made me work, the, the wild situations you'd run into, it's a miracle that I never got in a really bad car accident to get in. It slowly burns you out in a way that you can't explain until you are out of it. You just kind of know something's wrong and you're not happy. The biggest thing that the public doesn't understand about the hotel industry is that there are wild things happening behind closed doors every single day. Fabulously wealthy individuals are wild. Everything happens behind closed doors.